Alrighty, let's see if we can quickly make a thumbnail. Let me use my barbell. Let's see. I can make a thumbnail. Yeah. Okay, I think that was quite a little awkward. <laughs> Let's start. Hi everyone and once again welcome back to my channel. I haven't posted in such a long time and the year is already ending so I thought let's just make another video real quick for you guys. So today's topic on video I'm talking about identity and specifically identity in Christ. Now this is a topic that I've really been having on my heart and had a revelation about who I am and what my worth is and I want to share that with you. I know that sometimes most of the things that we think is our identity are a negative and I would really like to change those things into more positive things. So let's get into this video, grab your cup of tea and sit back, relax and enjoy. The first thing we usually ask is what is identity? And I was also wondering about this and so I did some research and I'm wanting to read for you from Kenneth Hagen Ministries. Our identity in Christ. What does it mean to have identity with Christ? It is normal for us to identify with something or with someone. It makes us feel connected and it gives us a feeling of belonging. I found this to be very true. Sometimes we find our identity in someone who says something specifically or social media that tells us to be a specific something or how we look or what we do. Those are the things sometimes that makes us feel that we belong to something or it gives us a sense of worth and a sense of value. Now this is not wrong but is it true to find your identity in something that is not constant? Because the world's things, even people and things, change consistently. And the only thing that does stay constant is God. And He is the one who called us and who made us. And like my t-shirt says, the one who designed you gets to define you. And that is God. I've said it so many times in so many other videos. And I really do believe that it is the absolute truth. There is sometimes so many things that people or social media tell us of who we are, but if we look to the Bible, what God says, it is a whole book. And as you can see, it is quite thick. So if you're wanting to know what your identity is, just look to the Bible, just look to the words of God. Now this book, has so many pages and it is written full of exactly who he is and if you get to know him better then he could speak to you the truth about exactly who you are so my point what I'm trying to make is who can we relate to in the biblical times I know for me that the person who stands out is Esther. Now you might think, why Esther? Because most people only know her for changing a nation after talking to the king. And yes, that is true. But she had to hide her identity of being a Jew. Now. Esther was adopted as a little girl by her uncle and she had to live through certain battles in her life until she got married to the king and even after. So 
The thing is, she had to hide her identity, and she had some struggles. But throughout every single struggle, she still trusted God without even knowing what his plan was. She just knew that he had called her to a bigger purpose, as is time such as this, as most of us here. She knew that her life had a purpose and had a calling in spite of all her struggles. So she was always in preparation, spending time with Jesus and in the Word until she had to do her thing, which is save the nations. I'm not saying that none of us can change the nations. I think it just starts with you first. So maybe be the change you want to be in this world and see the world around you starting to change. So after Esther became queen, she married the king, she saved the nations. Now that just speaks to me of she becoming queen. But before she became queen, she was already a daughter of our King Jesus, of our God, because she invited him into her life and spending time with him, she already was adopted even into the family of Christ. That's where she found her identity. Now, when we are born into a family, we are automatically part of that family. Now, just as when we become Christians, we become part of God's family. And I can read you a scripture, and that scripture is in John 1, verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, who did receive Jesus in their hearts, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So you have the right to be called a child of God once you accept Jesus, our Lord, God, into our heart, into your heart. <laughs> so when we accept Jesus into our hearts, we know that he is our savior, he is our Lord, and he is our king, which makes you that is watching, if you've accepted Jesus into your heart, it makes you a daughter or a son of the king, which means you are royalty. Isn't that just amazing and mind-blowing that I'm sitting here in front of you? I am royalty. That is my identity. That is who God called me to be, is his daughter. Now, here are a few things that God calls us as daughters to be in the Bible. I just wanted to let you know that if you accept the Jesus into your heart, He gives us the tools to get beyond our struggles. He helps us. He gives us the armor of God. He gives us tools to go through each and every single day so we do not have to fear. And some of those things I want to read to you so it says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or of fear. That just means anxiety and depression. He has not given us that. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound and calm mind. And he has also given us self-control. Those are some of the tools that God gives us when we enter into his kingdom. The last thing I just want to tell you that is also things that God given us it is also fruit of the spirit. And we read that so many times and just think over and just love, patience, peace, joy, kindness, yada, yada, yada. But let me read you something else. Colossians 3 verse 12. Therefore, God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, 
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So it's not just Jesus giving us those things, but us needing to put on those things. Us changing our identity from negative to positive sometimes does mean to cut certain friends out of our lives. I don't mean literally, but just to get rid of some of those toxic friends, people who actually brings you down. And even some accounts on social media, start unfollowing them. If we want to put on those things as royalty, sometimes we need to listen to what the Word of God says. Go read your Bible instead of listening and looking to the lies of social media. Now, as you know, there are so many more things that I can speak on and just continue this conversation. Sometimes, most of us, I know that I've struggled with this, is finding my identity in Christ was very hard, even as a single. And I know that sometimes I still go into feeling that I'm not good enough. That is one of the worst lies I've ever heard. So I am now in a place where I can confidently say that I'm so content in my singleness and I can't wait to just glorify God in this season. If you can honestly not say that you feel like you have a sense of worth, if you do not have a certain someone or look a certain way or feel a certain way by your side, then I would recommend you to subscribe and comment down below if you would like to see a video on that. I might do it next week. Thank you everybody for watching. I do really hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like, please subscribe and comment down below what you would like to see next and if any of this did speak to your heart, I would really like to know and connect with all of you and continue the conversation down there in the comments. So I would love to hear from you and have a very enjoyable day, evening, whenever you're watching. I love you and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.